We call this the metaverse. The metaverse. The metaverse. What do you know about the metaverse? When you picture it in your head, how do you see it? In the simplest explanation, the metaverse is a network of connected virtual worlds. The focus of these worlds is on social interaction. Essentially, it's just you, or actually your avatar, moving around in a digital world. And what defines that space is the freedom users have in determining how they use it. It's not one platform, it's likely the next phase of how we interact with the internet. If you're still having trouble picturing it, Ready Player One's Oasis and Futurama's depiction of the internet are really good examples of what a metaverse is. I'm sure you, like a lot of people, have heard the term metaverse because of Zuckerberg's announcement. The company Facebook has been rebranded to Meta and it plans to build its own metaverse platform. This isn't a term that Zuckerberg created. It was actually coined in 1992 in a book of all places. Neil Stevenson first used the word metaverse in his novel Snow Crash. And what's interesting about Snow Crash is that the future it proposes feels more relevant now than ever. Now, the metaverse of Snow Crash is one for people to escape into. And for some, it's really their only chance to live. You see, the real world in the book is depressing. The global economy has collapsed, the United States government is all but useless, and its dollar has been hyperinflated to the point it's worthless. The world is primarily split up into corporate states like Mr. Lee's Greater Hong Kong, and of course, Earth is dealing with the devastating effects of climate change. It's not a reality that people want to live in. So to quote the book, when you live in a shithole, there's always the metaverse. Because there, people have a little more control over what their life looks like. Physically, the metaverse is an urban environment built along a 65,536 kilometer road called The Street. It has its own economy, people can work and socialize in it, they can essentially fulfill most of their needs within the virtual world. However, it's not a complete escape, especially from inequality. One company, L. Bob Rife's cable television network, is the only way to access what is essentially the internet. There are public access terminals, but the avatars from these are low quality and appear in black and white. And the sophistication of an avatar is linked to your status in the metaverse. So if you're using one of these terminals, people know you're poor. And as far as buying property in the world, users need to go through the global multimedia protocol group. But because everyone essentially needs to use the metaverse, the property is incredibly expensive, limiting the people who can afford the property to those with money, unless you were one of the lucky early adopters. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's virtual, just code more, why limit it? But where's the money in that? If by this point you're seeing a few parallels between the world Stevenson created and our world, I'm not surprised. This is why Zuckerberg changing the name Facebook to Meta and pursuing metaverse technology is all a little ironic. Zuckerberg is known for buying up promising tech, like VR company Oculus, to have control over certain social places while he also allegedly is buying out or burying potential competition. The Federal Trade Commission is even pursuing an antitrust case against Facebook for this very reason. What does this have to do with Snow Crash? Well, it's not promising that one company has access to and control of the metaverse itself, which is what Zuckerberg is seemingly trying to do. By calling the company Meta, Zuckerberg has essentially linked his company to the progression of the metaverse. When you think of it or hear about the innovation surrounding it, you are naturally going to think of his company. People are going to associate Meta as the people behind the metaverse, whether whatever innovation actually came out of the company or not. His company, a tech conglomerate that is unapologetically trying to become a tech monopoly, is creating a world where people can essentially live their lives. And they won't only control that world, but also access to it. Now, despite Zuckerberg's attempts, many believe that for a metaverse to exist, it needs to be decentralized. No single regulatory body is in control of it. Rather, the metaverse will be the next phase of how we experience the internet. We are still developing the technologies and figuring out how it will integrate with our lives. Saying exactly what it will be would be like trying to explain to someone in the 90s what the internet of the 2020s is. And this change won't come all at once. The creation will be a slow one as new technologies, innovations, and protocols will need to be created. And after that, people will have to use it. Early adopters will have to create content and reasons for other people to hop on and interact with the world. They have to give a reason for more people to use it, much like the internet in its early stages. As it stands right now, the internet cannot handle millions of people having a shared experience. But we are working on it. Look at the concert Fortnite did with Marshmallow. 11 million players joined the event but it was not a synchronistic experience with all 11 million users. It was multiple instances of the concert being streamed to rooms with 100 people in each. So people weren't having one shared experience, which is a crux of the metaverse, 
but they were able to experience it with an independent agency. As for the adoption of this new technology, it probably won't be a difficult one. The gradual integration of tech into our lives became a sudden one with the sudden onset of the pandemic, so people are more comfortable experiencing life in a virtual world than they were before. So as what the internet looks like progresses over the next few years, we have to consider who we want to see controlling it. Because our data, our privacy, what we are allowed to share will be controlled by whoever controls that world. And Zuckerberg has already said that his world will be filled with ads, which raises a lot of questions about our privacy and data. And also if we want the metaverse to look like what Futurama predicted. And right now it feels like we're heading towards the world of Snow Crash. The United States has already hyperinflated its dollar and we're really feeling the effects of climate change. So we can either heed Stevenson's warning or fulfill what he prophesied back in 1992. I'm Jacqueline Swan and this is Technality.